name's Andrea Tooley, and welcome to the Andrea Tooley channel, or a doctor in the house. Um, today I have my good friend Christine with me here, and we're going to do an interview uh, for you about the MCAT. So this is kind of my plan for the future of this channel, is to interview friends in all different fields of health, nursing, PA, respiratory therapy, dentistry, kind of everything, and give you as much information as possible about um, pre-medical, pre-health field, and things like that. So with that, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, please? Hi, everybody. My name is Christine. I'm from Virginia. I went to UVA as an undergrad where I majored in neuroscience, and now I'm a first year here at the Mayo Clinic for medical school. Perfect. So um, this video is probably going to focus on the MCAT. So why don't you give us kind of an introduction of the MCAT. You know, I took it way too long ago <laughs> to give any advice, and it's way more fresh for you. Sure. So I took the MCAT my second semester of junior year. Um, I studied with it, or I studied for it during my junior year, which I thought was a big challenge in and of itself. Sure. Um, there are many things I wish I would have done differently, and I'm hoping to touch upon that in this video and hopefully help you guys out a little bit. Okay, perfect. So what what is the MCAT? For people who aren't from the U.S. or people who are maybe in high school or don't know about the MCAT, what, what is it? Yeah, so the MCAT stands for the Medical College Admissions Test, and basically in order for you to apply to medical school, um, you need to take this test. It's kind of like the SAT. That's what I thought of it as. It's the SAT for medical schools. Um, and it covers a lot of topics that you should have taken as a pre-med. And that includes biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, along with some other classes that they've added in. Okay. All right. And I've ma mentioned this before. Those are the classes that are required to take the MCAT and to get into medical school. But that doesn't mean that you're required to major in a science. You can major in whatever you want as long as you fit in those classes. Um, what are the sections in the test? So when I took it, before the change, um, we had three sections. We had verbal reasoning, biological sciences, which included biology and general chemistry, and then we had physical sciences, which included, uh, no, I'm sorry, the biological sciences included biology and organic chemistry, Right. and then the physical sciences had physics and gen chem. Okay, all right, so those three sections, and then the scoring is three individual scores that are all added up to equal your total score, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So how, what are the scores? So you can get up to 15 in each section um, for a total of 45. That's the maximum. I know it's changed a little bit, and from what I know, there's another section called Social Sciences, and that adds okay. another 15 points. Oh. So it's a total of 60. 60. It's out of 60 points now. Okay. All right. So, yeah, when I took it, it was 45 as well, and, like, nobody gets a 45. <laughs> Maybe somebody. We heard rumors about somebody <laughs> in our school getting a 42, which is already... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I can't imagine. Okay. All right, so let's kind of delve into how exactly you study for these sections because, like you said, we've got biology, organic chemistry, general chemistry, and physics. Mm -hmm. That's a ton of material to cover, yeah, yeah. Um, plus the verbal reasoning. How do you even approach studying for this? The great thing about the MCAT is that there are so many wonderful study materials out there. Um, some great companies include Exam Crackers, Kaplan, Princeton Review, among others. Um, and they have these great study books, and I don't know how I would have studied without them, honestly. Okay. And I think my biggest challenge during that time was I decided to study while I was also um, a junior in college. Right. And so for me, balancing studying time for my classes and then studying for the MCAT was really difficult. Um, but I felt that those books helped a lot. Okay. okay. I can't imagine studying for it while you're studying for your science classes because I took it over the summer. Um, and I dedicated my whole summer to studying for that. And I'm glad I have Christine here because I took it in 2008. I'm so old. No, you're not. <laughs> and, um, oh gosh. And so, um, yeah, when I took it, it was totally different. And I took a Kaplan class, which lots of people did. But I think that now people are kind of moving away from that and going more towards um, the books like Exam Crackers and less of the classes. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I studied, I took it in 2013. Um, so a few years after Andrea. And it seems just like a few. just a few years. Um, yeah, not a lot of people took classes that was still available to us. But I think that the biggest benefit of taking those classes was that it gave you a timeline like we talked about. Right. Um, but those new study books that came out, they gave you a timeline as well. So they would tell you week one, you would study this, and week two. So I followed that timeline. Um, okay. Also on Student Doctor Network, there was a timeline already made, and I thought that was a great review. Um, and I followed oh, yeah. that. Sure. So you can create your own timeline. 
Um, and that's what I would suggest doing. Okay, so kind of making a study schedule where you break down how many months you have to schedule or to study, mm -hmm. what you're going to study each week, when you're going to take your practice tests, your full length tests, mm -hmm. um, and everything like that. And like Christine mentioned, if you haven't checked out studentdoctor.net, it's a great resource. It's kind of intimidating and sometimes <laughs> overwhelming, but I used it all through medical school and undergrad. You can see how people studied for other tests, and it's just a really good resource. So Definitely. check it out. Okay, so what kind of things would you have done differently in terms of your studying? So I think that one of the biggest things I talked about, my biggest challenge during this time was studying for classes and the MCAT. Right. So I wish I did what Andrea did. I wish I took a summer or a winter break um, just to focus on the MCAT and the MCAT alone. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like there was a lot of discontinuing times when I was studying just because I couldn't sure. focus on um, studying biology and then also studying for my neuroscience courses. Yeah. So that would have been a huge benefit. Um, another thing I would have done differently was how I approached those practice tests. Okay. Um, and I had purchased all, I think there are 10 tests that you can purchase from AAMC. Um, and I had taken all those practice tests, but I was in, I didn't take it seriously. I was in much more of a relaxed setting. So I had coffee right. in one hand and okay. cookies and my feet propped up. <laughs> Um, and I wasn't serious. So when right. I got to the actual testing environment, yeah. all my nerves set in. Um, and I wasn't prepared for that. Okay. So that's something I would have done differently was just make sure you're in the mentality telling yourself this is a real thing. Um, and to really focus in on that so that when you're actually on the test day, you're so used to it and you're so prepared. That's, that's a great do. tip. That's such a good tip. I remember the first practice test I took was just a couple weeks into my studying and I went to a computer lab at Butler where I went to college and I had earphones and I was like, oh, I'm going to take, you know, <laughs> and I think I got a 21 oh, on my yeah. first practice test and I just flipped out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was so afraid. Um, and then I remember my, for some reason for me, every single time I took it, my score went up by three, it just consistently. So mm -hmm. I got a 21 and then I got a 24 and then I got a 27 and then I finally got a 30 <laughs> and then I plateaued at a 30, yeah. 31 forever and yeah. it took me so long to bust past that and be consistently more in like the 35 range which is kind of where I wanted to be uh -huh. um, and those practice tests were a pain and they were awful but I feel like they were really key in studying. I also think the great thing about the MCAT is there's so much room for improvement. Yes. So don't be scared by your first test score because, like Andrea, I think I was in the low 20s the first time, yeah. and I was thinking, I'm never going to get into med school, this is not happening, and I freaked myself out. Um, but I realized you can jump 10, 20 points yep. if you work hard for it. And same with all my friends. So that's the great thing about the MCAT is the more you study, the better you'll do. Yep, I think so too. One of my um, mentors said to me, the MCAT is beatable. Yeah, And that totally. is so true. It's totally beatable. Mm -hmm. So you have to go into it with that kind of attitude. <laughs> Another thing, actually, I just thought of this that really helped me is that I really focused on my weaker points. So mm -hmm. I was really strong with verbal reasoning. I was consistent. I always got over a 10. I never got under a 10 even from my very first practice test. And so that was never an issue for me. I remember I would take a verbal reasoning test every morning, like a 60 minute. I would just wake up and take one to get better at reading faster. And I did that for a couple weeks, but that's all. I never did anything more than that. But I was really weak in the physical sciences, which is physics and gen chem. And physics is just not my thing. And I've mentioned before that I hate math. And um, so I was super weak there. And I remember feeling really frustrated because I was getting like nines and eights and the occasional 10, but never higher than that. Mm -hmm. And um, so one weekend I said, I am going to just get through this and change, you know, my whole physics score. And I think I did like every single practice question I could ever oh find on the physical sciences. <laughs> I took like five days and just only did that. And then after that, I was suddenly getting 12s and 13s, and it, it just you busted through it. So that, that helped me pick, figure out what my weakest point was and really focus on that. I definitely have to agree with Andrea. Um, and Exam Crackers has a great set. It's 1,001 questions in each subject. Nice. So I remember, for me personally, organic chemistry was my beast, and I couldn't get past mm -hmm. that. So I ended up buying the book. It's 1,001 questions in organic chemistry. Um, and I spent an entire weekend doing it. And I felt like that gave me the confidence I needed yes. because I was getting more and more questions correct the more I did it. Exactly. And nothing beats just doing tons of questions because there's only so many ways 
they can ask yeah. about certain organic mechanisms mm -hmm. or whatever. So once you get comfortable with, oh, this is what they're asking, then, then you know what yeah. to do. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So um, let's kind of talk about the timeline in terms of when to take the MCAT because I know I took it after my sophomore year, that mm -hmm. summer between sophomore and junior year, which is really early, and I could only do that because I took <laughs> organic over the summer, which was kind of cheating because it was way too easy. <laughs> um, but most people take it like you did during mm -hmm. junior year, during classes. When can you take it? So I think the important thing is when you're applying. And it's important to remember that it takes a month to get your score back between when you take right. the test and when you get the score back. So for me, if I wanted to apply and put my application in on the very first day, which I think is June, the first weekend of June yeah. um, is when applications were due. So I had to take it by the end of May, or I'm sorry, the beginning of May for okay. that month timeline. Um, so I ended up taking it at the very beginning of May, and I got my score. So I was really banking on doing well on this test because I had no time to retake it. Yeah. Um, but I got my score about two days before I submitted everything. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what do you think about retaking? Because I know a lot of people retake this test um, several times, and it's not uncommon. Right. But people have different opinions about whether or not you should retake it. Personally, if I could do it again, I would retake it. Um, I wasn't 100% happy with my score. I did okay, but I could have done better, I felt. Um, and I think my biggest mistake in that sense was taking it on the last day possible. So unless I wanted to turn my application in a month later, right. or if I wanted to turn my application in the next year, I had to go with my score. Okay. Um, and so I think that retaking it, there are huge benefits to retaking it. First of all, you're, the MCAT is a mental game a lot of times, and so when you're in this testing environment, you, the very first time, I thought it was really, really difficult um, getting into that mentality and just having a clear mind and a clear head. So if I did it a second time, I know what to expect. I think I have more confidence going in. Mm -hmm. I know how the time is going to go. I know when breaks are happening. I know what the room looks like, what the computers yeah. look like. Um, so if I had to retake it, I think that that would have given me a confidence boost. And in the end, it would have given me a higher score, I would think. Okay. All right. And so... so Christine, you're of the mind of retaking it. Mm -hmm. I kind of approached it, and again, I'm like a dinosaur in MCAT years, <laughs> so when, back when I took it, um, I really approached it of the mind, I'm not going to take this again, I'm only taking it once, because for one, studying for it is awful. Mm -hmm. It's like the worst yep. three months of your life, mm -hmm. and I just, I remember being so miserable, so it's really rough studying for it, and so why would you ever want to do that again? Um, and then... Also, when you retake it, you're always risking getting the mm -hmm. same score or potentially doing worse. Right. And if you do worse, then it, I mean, medical schools, correct me if I'm wrong, they see all of your scores. That's correct. So if you take it three times, they'll see all three of them. So if you do worse, they'll still see the better one, but it kind of, you know, I mean. I agree. And it's also, like I said, there's a time between, there's a month between when you get your score back. And so a lot of the MCAT is just straight memorization. So yes. during that month, you just forget it. So it's not like you can get your score and then take it again the next weekend. You have to right. restudy a lot of it. Um, and that is another beast in and of itself. It's just, do you want to take another month, another three months to study? You have to prepare for that as well. Yeah. Okay. And I think a lot of people, at least when I was studying and I was interacting with other people from Butler who were studying in our little pre-med group, um, some people kind of went into it of the mindset of, oh, I can always retake mm -hmm. it. And I think that they took it before they were ready. Oh. And so when I've given people advice, my number one thing is do not take it until you are consistently scoring three, four, five points higher Absolutely. than you want to score on the real thing. So if you need a 31, do not take it until you're getting 35s. Because if you need a 31, you're going to take it and get a 27. And then, you know. I think that's great advice. So um, I know that now the MCAT is changing and there's going to be different subjects and you kind of touched on that before. What have you heard or what do you know about the new MCAT? From what I know, from what I've heard, it's going to be a lot longer. So it's going to be okay. extended by at least a couple of hours, if not longer. Um, there's more material on the test, so it means studying-wise you have to take that into account. Maybe you have to study longer, maybe there's more material to study. That's important to recognize. Um, and I know that the score is now out of 60. Okay, all right. And if somebody um, doesn't know anything about the MCAT, they're just looking into this, where do you think they can find the best information? What should they do sure. just to start? There's so many great resources online. I think if you did a simple Google search, 
um, AAMC would turn up, yeah. and that they are the ones that administer the actual test. And like we mentioned before, the student doctor network, mm -hmm. they, I'm sure people already know what's going on there. There's yes. some very, very informative people on that website. Okay, perfect. So we can find all about the new changing of the test and what's going to be different. Um, but I think in general, I mean, this is really good advice, our, our experience. So I hope that this helps you. Um, anything else you want to add? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's been great. I hope it helps. I hope it helps. Good luck <laughs> studying. You can do it. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.